Okay, so I'm going to have a little chat today about um, swing plane, which is a uh, one of the numbers on TrackMan that I use um, every day in my coaching. But a lot of the time I'm met by the golfer um, that has a lack of understanding of what it is. A lot of the time they'll just say, I don't know what that is, what is swing plane, can you, can you explain it to me? So um, in TrackMan's terms, what swing plane is, is the measurement of the geometric center of the club head um, when it's traveling from around knee high in the downswing to around knee high in the through swing and it's taking a measurement of how it's traveling and then it's looking at the angle that that's tilted to the horizon so um, a more steeper angle would be a higher number if your swing was steeper and a flatter number a lower number would be if the club is traveling flatter and more behind you and more around so for example if we're using a six iron uh, we'd expect to see roughly a 60 degree swing plane number um, depending on body sizes and heights and arm lengths but generally uh, 60 degrees uh, whereas with a driver we'd be looking at a lower number so more like 45 degrees um, would be a good number for driver now uh, there's a lot of stuff online at the moment talking about shallowing the club and trying to get the club head as shallow as possible and um, this can create, in my opinion, some issues if overdone, like anything. So I want to explain some of the things I've been seeing quite a lot of, which is a swing plane number that's dumping too low. So this might be an average size guy who has a swing plane with a six iron of around 54 or 53 degrees on track man. This would be, in my opinion, this would be um, too low a number. And some of the issues that are connected with that. So some of the things I see when people start to get too shallow a swing plane is um, poor strike control so because we've got the club head coming too far underneath the swing plane it's hard to get good compression on the ball um, club path control so again underneath the swing plane you can see how this might have some issues with club path swinging more to the right um, club face control so if I've got a, um, a plane that's too low and the club comes in contacting with the heel first or the toes up in the air then we know this is going to have some impact on the face alignment that impacts so there's a, lot, a host of reasons that um, having the swing plane out too low or too high is not ideal and uh, I want to chat a little bit about what I see some of the main causes of a swing plane getting too low um, and we've done a lot of research on our 3D system with the players that we work with and we've seen um, quite a few correlations between guys that are under plane and dumping that number down 52s and 53s and what their bodies are actually doing in the swing so um, the first example I'm going to give is how the lead wrist and the lead forearm are working so generally what I've seen is if the player starts to get cupped on the way down this tends to put the forearm more into pronation and those two combining factors have an effect of dropping the plane number low so that the more it goes this way you can see the effect it starts to have on the club um, the second real big contributing factor is our thrust control so um, if we have poor control of pelvic thrust in the downswing towards the ball then the effect that this can have again is to dump the club underneath or um, how our head thrust is working so if our head is pulling away from the imaginary wall where I started if my pelvis moves towards or my head pulls back again you can see the resulting impact that starts to have on the club shaft again and the, the, a lot of these things kind of are, are patterns so the more you, we, we tend to see players that work this way the more we'll tend to see a little bit cupped forearm working in pronation so how do we work on fixing these things with the players so first of all um, when looking at isolating the lead arm specifically and the lead wrist from the top with one of the guys we're working towards feeling like his wrist is more neutral which to him feels like it's working the other way uh, rather than cupped into flexion and then at the same time whilst he's doing this as an add-on um, to try and match what he's doing with his wrist we try and feel like and this is the key word feel that his forearm works in pronation uh, sorry in, in, in supination so it feels like he turns it down to the ground because he likes to kind of roll it up to the sky so if we had a watch on his watch face points up to the sky 
we try and feel like he gets his watch face to roll down to the ground, which works his forearm and his wrist how we like. Um, in terms of control and thrust, so obviously you can put a bag or something behind your bum and we're trying to get you to feel like you're not moving off the bag as much. Sometimes it'll be in the backswing, sometimes it'll be in the downswing, but either any thrust towards the ball in this direction will cause some shallowing or flattening of the plane. And again, with the head, uh, how we could work towards improving head thrust. Um, a lot of the time we will just hold the peak of a cap of a player and make sure that as he's swinging, he has to hold more over and head staying on the wall versus hanging back. So there's a couple of fixes that we've used quite successfully to try and help some players that have had lower swing plane. Um, if you suffer with some of these issues or you think you do, try and give some of those a go and see if it helps.